Hi guys, welcome to another MRCP basis video. This is going to be on uh, abdominal examination, specifically on the renal patient. Okay, so for those of you who are not aware, my name is Vishal Kumar. I'm a doctor in the UK and I have set up the Keen Medic website and the channel. Feel free to uh, find out more about me from the YouTube channel or my website, keenmedic.com. Let's get started. In terms of the renal patient, um, you would be surprised how much you can um, garner in terms of information uh, just from the examination, even without touching the patient, okay? So this is one of the beauties about the renal patient in that there is a lot to see and a lot to take in and process as a doctor, as their doctor, and, and therefore as the candidate, even before you talk to them okay so which is why if you are given a renal patient in the examination setting it is your chance to pick up all the possible marks that you can possibly get okay and this video is going to take you through all the important factors that you need to consider in gaining all those important marks all right so let's get going. The three important conditions that will be often tested in MRCP paces, renal examinations are polycystic kidneys, diabetic nephropathy, and glomerular nephritis. These also happen to be the top causes of uh, renal transplants in the UK, okay? So you will see patients um, with one of these three conditions quite often. Polycystic kidneys and diabetic nephropathies, in fact, uh, are probably the two most common, actually. So you need to know everything about them, okay? So let's, let's talk about the scars because they are so very important. So you need to know what each scar is. You need to know what it looks like. You need to know where, where it is, what it means, everything about it, okay? Um, and the significance of it. So, of course, one of the most prominent scars that you need to know in the um, renal patient is the renal transplant scar. So, some people call it the hockey stick scar as well, and that's what it looks like, okay? So, it is, it is in the iliac fossa. It can be either in the right iliac or the left iliac fossa, and... Um, underneath this uh, scar you can feel a transplant around here okay it's all connected up to the uh, vasculature and if it is functioning it should not be tender and it should be fine the skin should uh, look healthy the scar should be all healed everything should be normal like this patient okay by the way all the photos i've used are uh, from google images so all the copyright is to their respective owners okay this is what a peritoneal dialysis scar often looks like it is usually Usually around the belly button area so this looks like the belly button so it is around the belly button area it can be on either side as well uh, depending on where they have tunneled the peritoneal catheter okay so that's what a peritoneal dialysis scar is another one is of course knowing what an AV fistula is so AV is uh, arteriovenous fistula a lot of renal patients can have AV fistulas this can be before or after a transplant okay it, it just depends entirely on their history but typically it is usually before a transplant okay so what can happen is that uh, if a patient is identified as having end-stage renal failure for the first time then they are put on the waiting list for a transplant and while they are waiting which can be days weeks months years okay they are scheduled to have an AV fistula done and the fistula when it is mature which takes about uh, six weeks this is roughly what it looks like okay and there are two main sites for AV fistulas. One is the radiocephalic, which is further distal around here. Okay, uh, so of course, this is this is going towards the patient's body, this side, and this will be more towards their fingers. Okay, so radiocephalic would be around here and brachiocephalic would be around here. Uh, so this looks actually like it is going further down. So it looks like, like, like a radiocephalic uh, AV fistula. So that's what a fistula looks like. You need to know exactly what it what it is and what it does. Um, and lastly, but definitely not the least, is looking for nephrectomy scars. So this is what a nephrectomy scar is, okay? So taking the kidney out. This is, of course, an open uh, nephrectomy. Some people, uh, you know, do have laparoscopic nephrectomies as well. Um, but this is an open nephrectomy, and this is often what you will probably see in the uh, MRCP PACES exam. Make sure you have seen this in real life as much as you can. And 
put two and two together, especially, you know, they have got a transplant scar as well. Okay. All right. I hope this is clear. Do feel free to pause and come back to this video as and when you need to, to um, revise and uh, refer to things. Okay. So in terms of the thought process, I want to now take you through, guide you through the kind of thinking, okay, the kind of framework you should have in your mind the moment you see a renal patient, okay? So these are the things that you should be thinking of in the order as soon as you see a patient who you have identified is, as being a renal patient, okay? So you need to recognize that this patient has had end-stage renal failure. That is the very first thing, okay? Uh, as soon as you see they've got an AV fistula or a transplant or a peritoneal dialysis scar, uh, you need to know that this patient has had end-stage renal failure. Okay, so that's the very first step. So what is the cause of this end-stage renal failure then? Now you need to do a bit of detective work, okay? You need to find out what the, what the cause might be. Is it polycystic kidneys? If it is polycystic kidneys, are the kidneys still inside? Can you feel them when you're blotting? If the kidney is not inside, has it been taken out? Uh, you know, can you see the nephrectomy scar or not? What's going on? So that's for polycystic kidneys, okay? For diabetic nephropathies, patients may well be on insulin. So if they have got diabetic nephropathy and they are at the stage of end-stage renal failure, they will be on insulin, okay? It is just not possible that they would be not on insulin if they have reached end-stage renal failure secondary alone to diabetes itself, okay? So look for evidence of uh, glucose testing on their fingers fingers or insulin pens by the bedside, things like that, okay? Because you're obviously not allowed to ask the patient, uh, you're not allowed to talk during the examination. So look for these on the fingers and by the bedside. Uh, for things like hypertensive, again, um, they might have medications by the bedside, but it's more difficult to diagnose this. So that's how you look for the cause. So looking for clues, as I said earlier on, same thing as before. Okay, so feel free to pause and look at this list. And uh, the next step in the process is after you've identified the cause uh, of the end-stage renal failure, you need to now see whether the mode of renal replacement therapy is functioning. Okay, so this is what you need to do. Is it functioning or recently used? Now, by it, I mean either the uh, transplant or the AV fistula, okay? It is unlikely that they will have a peritoneal catheter in their tummy when they are in your exam, but they may they may well do, I don't know. But if they do, you need to obviously comment on that um, and obviously say that, you know, it has been recently used. For a transplant, you need to uh, be able to tell whether it's functioning. The way you do, do that is by just checking for heat, tenderness uh, around the area. We will cover how to examine a transplant in a bit. And AV fistula, you need to again mention whether or not it is functioning or recently used. And the way you do that is by looking for fresh needle marks. Okay, that suggests that it is recently used. So they basically just look like uh, needle marks. So just small uh, dots on the fistula, okay, with small areas of bruising. Uh, and that suggests that the transplant has probably failed if they have one, okay? So if a patient has got an AV fistula and a transplant, and you have noticed that actually the AV fistula has been recently used because there are needle marks, then that can only mean one thing, that the transplant is not functioning, right? Because if it was functioning, then the AV fistula should not be used, right? So that's what it means. So that's actually looking at the AV fistula. The other thing that you need to do as soon as you identify an AV fistula is examining, okay? So the, what, the way you do that is by... Um, examining for thrills uh, and breweries. So you would also auscultate uh, to identify the breweries on top of the AV fistula, okay? That suggests patency, all right? So for transplants, as I said, uh, looking for tenderness and looking for syst uh, systemic signs of renal failure, that suggests transplant failure as well, and that is acute, of course. Uh, so things like uremic flap and cephalopathy and fluid overload. 
if a patient has any of these, then you need to mention it and not forget to mention it because it is very significant and that could be potentially an emergency because they would, no they would need dialysis, all right? So in terms of the next steps, you need to think about the complications, okay? So what have we done so far? We have identified that the patient has end-stage renal failure. We have identified the cause of the end-stage renal failure. We've identified whether or not the mode of renal replacement is functioning or not and now we need to think about what the complications are and whether they have got any of them okay by complication I really mean the complication of treatment okay specifically treatment so by treatment um, I mean specifically renal transplants so as you can imagine renal transplants are like any other transplant because they are a foreign body they will need immunosuppression okay so as they need immunosuppression they will most likely have uh, treatment side effects of the immunosuppressive medication that they are on so this could be tremor from the tacrolimus that they might be having so the easy way to remember is t tremor and tacrolimus t as well okay so tremor caused by tacrolimus the other thing might be steroids. So a lot of them are on steroids. And typically, as you would expect, like any other steroids, uh, they may have cushionoid appearances, bruising or diabetes, secondary to steroid use. Uh, and they may have insulin pens because of the steroid use. Okay. Next is gum hypertrophy, which can be due to cyclosporin. Make sure you know other causes of gum hypertrophy as well, because that is a very, very much a typical PACES exam question. Um, and lastly, but definitely not the least, evidence of skin malignancy. So these can be uh, BCCs, basal cell carcinomas, okay? So these can be uh, identified by scars on their skin, uh, excision scars. And uh, when you can't explain a scar on the skin and they are, they are a renal patient or with a transplant, then it is most likely due to one of these immunosuppressive medications. And they may have developed a basal cell carcinoma and had excision, which has left a scar on their skin afterwards, okay? So these are clues that you need to do a bit of detective work for uh, to identify the complications of the treatment that they have received. All right. This is something that a lot of candidates are not very well informed on. Okay. They are very poorly informed on. And what happens is that the candidate ends up really messing up the station because they don't really know how to examine a renal transplant. And it is honestly very easy, but also very easy to um, mess up on basically. All right. So I don't want you to do that. And I hope that this helps. So let's, let's see what you can do. So renal transplants are very hard to come by, right? As you can imagine. So the transplant is extremely precious to the patient. So you should not do anything that will cause the patient any kind of distress, okay? And be very careful when examining the transplant. So you make sure you don't cause pain. That is extremely important. Now, causing pain and eliciting tenderness are two very different things. And that is what I want to highlight here, okay? So this is how you examine them. Before you even lay a finger, you need to ask and make sure they're not in pain. You are allowed to ask them whether or not they are in pain before you touch them, okay? This, this you are allowed to do in the exams uh, examination situation so make sure you ask every single time and after that use the palm of your hand because you will be approaching the patient from the right side this would typically be your right side okay so use your right hand with the palm not the fingers not the fingertips okay your fingertips will cause pressure and pain don't do that use the palm of your hand to very gently palpate the transplant and just elicit for any signs of heat or tenderness okay just kind of up on the transplant itself do not press with your fingers very important guys and auscultate for any evidence of brewies so this is how you examine a renal transplant. Make sure you come back to this time and time again so that you are, this is fresh in your head. So in summary, we have covered quite a lot. I want to now give you a quick rundown of the things we have covered so that it's all fresh in your head and it, and it makes sense. Okay. Identify whether or not the patient has or has not got end-stage renal failure and justify your reasoning for saying that the patient has got end-stage renal failure. Next. What is the underlying cause of the end-stage renal failure? Next, 
what is the mode of current renal replacement therapy, whether, whether it is an AV fistula, peritoneal dialysis, or transplant, okay? Whether the renal replacement therapy, RRT, yeah, is active or functioning. Next, and whether or not there is any evidence of treatment complications. And finally, you need to give your management with all of this information summarized as to what you're going to do next, okay, based on what you've found. As always, guys, I hope you found this video very useful. I hope that you've learned one or two things at least. Come back to this when you're revising. Make sure you check out my PACES course online. The link will be in the description below. I will see you in the next video.